All right, so we got the nephrologist. We're okay. She, um, what happened? Remember, I told you that we were talking, we were talking about your kidneys, and they're not. So that's what he's. So she got sick Wednesday of last week, um, bloody diarrhea. Went in to see her pediatrician. He ordered a um, stool sample to be tested. Got the results back over the weekend. They all came back negative. She continued bloody diarrhea, vomiting for like four days. Do you know what type of test he had ordered though? Was it just e. coli, like coli, shigella, salmonella, so something with a C, yeah. maybe? Um, and then Sunday, she kind of was finished. No more vomiting, no more diarrhea. Just thinking, we just need to get her rehydrated, and you know, she just was kind of feeling weak. We need to get her rehydrated and eating again because she hadn't eaten anything. And, Monday, I took her into the pediatrician just to double check. She'd lost about six pounds, and he was thinking the same thing. She didn't look too dehydrated, just push fluids, try to get her to eat small bits, and she would kind of bounce back. So starting Monday, no, starting Tuesday, she started, every morning she wakes up feeling really queasy, vomiting, and then she kind of feels better, and she can kind of eat little bits and drink little bits throughout the day. Seems to really perk up in the afternoon once she gets a little food in her. And then we just start the same cycle over again in the morning. She feels nauseous. We tried Zofran, thinking if we could just keep her from being nauseous, she would eat and start to feel better. After, whatever, five days of that, we were like, okay, let's see. I think there's something else going on. Um, so. Did, did the uh, pediatrician do any blood work? No blood work. No, no blood work. Just the stool sample. Okay, just the stool sample. Uh, when was the last time she threw up? Threw up this morning. Uh, how has she been peeing? I've been asking her. She says she's been peeing normally, normally for her, which is, you know, she does not, she normally does not drink a lot and does not pee a lot. Um, it's just kind of normal for her. She probably peeing three or four times a day, which is pretty typical for her. Can you guys go over for me the different causes of hemolytic uremic syndrome? So, so the, main, the main one is uh, sugatoxin producing bugs. E. coli. E. coli or, yeah. Or, sh or shigal shigalosis. Okay. Uh, second second most, common. most common is the is a pneumonia associated uh, Okay, issues. streptococcus pneumoniae. Right. Yeah. And usually you would see a pneumonia picture in the kids right. as well. And that's why on some of these kids you're going to get uh, blood cultures and, mm -hmm. and uh, treat them with antibiotics because right. if it's a strep pneumonia etiology, the hemolytic uremic syndrome, well, that's an infectious cause. Mm -hmm. But then there's a third cause. What's what's that going to be? Uh, the third cause is complement-mediated HUS. Okay. Complement-mediated HUS is about 5 to 10 percent of all of HUS in children. Right. Okay. All right. Very good. Did she get any antibiotics nope. um, at any time during this bloody diarrhea? No. Because he didn't want to diarrhea. treat until he found out that it wasn't E. coli. He yeah. said, don't want to treat E. coli. Um, so no, since everything came back negative, he didn't treat. He shouldn't get any antibiotics. So you know the the blood work they did here kind of showed that the kidney function is really down. So I got my team here. Like my team here, um, Andre and and I call her Ninja. It's Nerja. Mm -hmm. That's right. So um, basically, if you have somebody with hemolytic uremic syndrome, what's what would you, you want to teach us a little bit about the uh, how, how you make the diagnosis? Yeah, so HUS, also called hemolytic uremic syndrome, normally we say they have a, a triad. And that triad includes um, <laughs> microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and also acute kidney injury. When she was having her bloody diarrhea, how many bloody diarrhea stools a day was she having? For the first Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday especially, and even into Friday, I mean, it was like constant. I mean, every 15 minutes. Um, mm -hmm. And, she, and terrible stomach cramping. I forgot that part. She just doubled over in pain. Um, and so she was and she, she was up all night long, Wednesday night and Thursday night. So how many days Friday. of bloody diarrhea would you say? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday were the bad days. Saturday there was still a little blood in it, but it, it, it had slowed down to maybe she had four or five okay. on Saturday. I mean on Friday. I mean on, hold on, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah. Those three days were bad. Saturday, maybe there were three or four. And then by Sunday, I haven't noticed any more blood in her stools. Just, okay. um, it's still loose and it's still not quite normal, but it's yeah. not, and she's not going frequently. She's okay. Just, 
on her uh, blood smear, she had some schistocytes, so she, she had some it. evidence of, of a hemolytic process going on, right? She also, yeah. We also did a um, lactose, lactase dehydrogenase, um, which is an enzyme that shows breakdown of blood products. Okay. That was elevated above uh, 2,000, which also goes with... Okay, so so what was products. what was her BUN creatinine? Her BUN creatinine, um, her BUN was 185, which is way above normal. Normal for this age group would be 20, 22 or lower. Um, her creatinine, if her kidneys are normal, um, would be less than 1.7. Okay. Hers was 7.2. Okay. So as you can see, she did have some... All right, so that's why she's going to get dialysis, so, okay. And uh, also for um, her platelets, um, it was in 104 range, which is thrombocytopenic um, for her, which also goes with HUS. Okay. As All well right. as she was anemic at uh, 7.1, which is way below normal. She okay. Be around 13, 14. So Ninja, what, what would you yeah. uh, what would you say would be the um, uh, differential with, on on this? Okay. What what things you're going to be thinking about? Uh, for her, I would also be thinking about a DIC, yeah. about TTP, about systemic vasculitis. Okay. Um, however, her DIC picture would be more acute. Uh, we would also, if you want to differentiate her. Uh, if want to differentiate DIC, we would get coag studies on her as well. Uh, but for diagnosing her with, with HUS, we would want to get toxin on her, right. also get stool studies on her, right. and if there is a, concur a concurrent bacterial infec infection suspected, we also want to get blood cultures. All right, so let's talk a little bit about management. You guys want to tell me a little bit about how, you're going to how we would manage hemolytic uremic syndrome. So most of the management is supportive care, but depending on how bad her kidney function is, uh, the cutoff uh, one of the cutoffs for a BUN was 80. If it's more than 80, she you would want to get dialysis on her. Okay. And uh, depending on her platelet levels and her anemia levels, you would want to get transfusions, platelet transfusions or blood cells. Yeah, so if her hemoglobin well. was less than 6, maybe you'd get a transfusion. Right. If her platelets were really low and, and dangerously low, you'd give her platelets. But So so what did her urine look like? So we did a point of care urinalysis here in the um, emergency department. What we found out she had um, moderate amounts of blood in her urine, and she also was found to have um, protein. Okay, so she's spilling a lot of protein, mm -hmm. and but had moderate moderate blood. Yes. Which also goes with the HUS um, picture of yeah. uh, acute kidney injury. All right. Did you get a high five? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I know this might sound scary, but you know, ICU is a good. They have a good team, and they take you care of you. Okay. Hope you get well soon. <laughs>